This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to talk about how to derive the formula for the area of a regular polygon. So uh, math teachers talk about the uh, formula, and the formula that they often say is the area is equal to one-half the apothem times its perimeter, the perimeter of the regular polygon. All right, I'm going to talk about where this formula comes from. I hate to throw formulas at people and then expect them to use it without them knowing what these, uh, where these formulas come from. Okay, well, let's put a polygon, a regular polygon, for us to discuss. All right, for the purposes of discussion, I drew a pentagon and a regular pentagon. So all the sides are congruent and all the internal angles are congruent to each other. All right, so what you do when you do these problems uh, is you always start with the center of the circle and you draw the radii. Okay, the radii are segments that connect the center to a vertex. So there should be, if I have n number of sides, there should be n radii. Okay, in other words, well, what does N stand for? And I'm going to put these as dots so they actually intersect with all the vertices. So we know that we're dealing with a regular polygon. Sure, this is a pentagon and it has five sides. But in general, when you're dealing with a regular polygon, we don't know how many sides there are. So I'm going to say that there are N, where N is the number of sides. So let's say we're dealing with some polygon, and the polygon has an unknown number of sides, but when we're doing the problem, we'll know what it is. So I'm going to say n is just going to stand for the number of sides, and in the, of course, in this case, it's 5. All right, let's say I wanted to calculate the area of this entire polygon. Well, the first thing you do is try to figure out what the area is of a isosceles triangle, right? Since all of these segments are congruent to each other, I'm dealing with a bunch of isosceles triangles. So if I could find the area of one, I'll use that to find the area of the entire thing. Well, uh, to do that, we, we know, of course, already that this is the radius. But now I'm going to bisect one of these central angles. So these are central angles. All of those are central angles, and they are going to be congruent to each other. If I were to bisect one of them, Okay, picture bisecting it with a segment. That would mean that these two angles are congruent to each other if you bisect it. If you bisect an isosceles triangle, it turns out that this segment also turns out to be a median. In other words, this is uh, cuts the side into two parts. All right, well, anyway, we call this segment the apothem. So it has a very important name. It's called the apothem of a regular polygon. OK, so this angle bisector, which is a median, uh, it's also a perpendicular bisector. Yep, it's also a perpendicular bisector. I'm not proving it, that it can be proven some other time. But I will tell you that that is also going to be a perpendicular bisector. Now, it's kind of important that if that segment is a perpendicular bisector, it means that I can calculate the area of this triangle. Uh, OK, and I'll show you how to do that one moment. Uh, the length of this entire segment here, from vertex to vertex, that is, of course, called the length of a side. That is one side. And of course, you can see that this pentagon has five sides. Or in general, I'm going to have n number of sides. All right, so if I were going to calculate the area of one of these triangles. Now I'm talking about the entire isosceles triangle. So if I were going to calculate the area of an entire isosceles triangle, it's fairly simple. There's a really simple formula. Remember, the formula is base times height divided by 2 for a triangle. So the base is S, the height is A, and I'm going to divide that by 2. So base times height divided by 2, that's the area of an isosceles triangle. So I'll put a little triangle here to say that that's just the area of the isosceles triangle. All right, now let's say I wanted to calculate 
the area of the entire polygon. So if we're calculating the area of the polygon, I'm just going to take the area of one of these isosceles triangles and multiply by how many I have. If I'm dealing with an n-sided regular polygon, that means I have n sides, I'm also going to have n number of triangles. So in other words, if I take the area of one isosceles triangle times n, I'll get the area of the entire polygon. So if I multiply n times the area of one isosceles triangle, I'm going to get a slightly new formula, n s a divided by 2. So now this is the area of one entire regular polygon. Okay, that still doesn't look like what we're dealing with, this formula that I have written up here. Okay, so let's talk about something else. Let's talk about what a perimeter is. If we were going to calculate the perimeter, well, you have to know what it means. Perimeter just means what's the length around a figure. So if I'm dealing with an n-sided figure and they're all congruent to each other, right, because it's a regular polygon, I'm going to multiply s times n, right? There's n sides, so s times n would be the length around this figure. Okay, so s times n, that has to be the perimeter of this entire polygon. All right, so that means I'm going to replace s times n, or in other words, s times n, or n, s, n times s, they mean the same thing, right? s times n, n times s, it doesn't matter what order you multiply. So when I multiply these two things together, it just means the perimeter. So that means I could rewrite the formula. So the area of the entire polygon, well, let's see, this is perimeter times a divided by 2. Perimeter times a divided by 2 starting to look like this formula. Okay, because remember I can multiply in any order. So this really means a times p divided by 2. And yep, if I'm divided by 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by a half. Okay, so there you go. That's where this formula comes from. It just comes from our definitions of radii, apothem, and side. And we play a little bit of replacement and we get this formula. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other instructional videos, our interactive quizzes, and of course, our text lessons. Take care.